Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I'm going to talk about transitions in Android. Now there are several types of transitions and I don't expect everything to be completed in this video. But take a look at the screen right in front of you. There are three devices. One a pre kit cat, one a KitKat device and then there's our lollipop device. They all have this activity called activity calling or activity A in their menu that's what they say and when you click on this what's basically going to happen is a new activity is launched on the screen it has a view group a layout which you don't see right now because it's the white background and there are four buttons inside that layout you go to the pre KitKat device you click on the view group here and you see another activity getting launched with a button Nothing great about it. In fact, it's very rough and abrupt, right? You press the back button, you go back. You go to KitKat here again, you do the same thing, click on the root, you go back here. But hey, take a look at the lollipop device here. When I click on the layout, what happens to the four buttons? They disappear. Something is sliding inside the screen. And now, when I press back button, this slides out and take a look at how those four buttons pop in. They are positioned. You saw that animation, that's what people call a transition in Android. And that's exactly what I'm going to teach you in this video. If you go to my channel, SlideNerd, and if you go to playlist, in the last video, we were stuck inside Material Design where I was telling you guys how to fix a bug that recently came out thanks to changes in the Wally library. Now, let's go to the transition API and first pay a visit and see what the API has to offer. So here is our abstract class transition. Notice immediately it's added in API level 19. So this brings the first question. Can we run transitions on pre lollipop or pre KitKat devices? Yes, you can, but not in an official way because I have not read at the time of making this video anywhere that there is an official library from Google doing this, but there are unofficial libraries that support this and I will get to them as we go further in this video series. So going first, let's take a look at what a transition object basically does. So if you take a look at the class overview, it says a transition object holds information about animations that will run on the targets during a scene change. So this brings the first question, what is a scene and what is a scene change? You see, in the beginning of this video, I showed you two activities. We were having four buttons in the first activity and when they were not moving, they represented the view hierarchy or the layout hierarchy of our first activity. That can be considered as a scene. Now it's not necessary that it is an activity because transitions apply to fragments as well. At the same time, if you remember at the start of this video, we had a second activity which had a single button that came into the place or came into the picture after the animation was complete. And that static area of the screen containing a single button, again, which was a part of the activity B, can be considered as another scene. Transitions simply let you animate between two scenes. How do they do that? Well, they capture the property values between the scenes and they try to play animations based on changes in the property values. So if you take a look at the documentation, which is full of jargon, you're not going to understand much. But then again, let me show you a nice post by Alex Lockwood that talks about transitions in detail. For those of you who don't know Alex Lockwood, he's also the person who wrote a very nice article on loaders and loader managers in Android. So here is a visual example of this fixed part of the screen right now is called a scene. Now let's say this is one scene and in the second scene you don't want these four buttons or views to be present. So if you run this animation you will notice that they fade out or you can slide them down or you can just explode them in four different directions. So that animation is generated for you with the help of the animator object and when the transition documentation told you capture property values what it simply was saying is find the position, the width, the visibility and other properties at the start or the first scene and find those properties in the second scene whether they are invisible, whether they are outside the screen and try to animate between those two by generating an animator for that transition. Like they have said here for example the fade transition which you just saw tracks changes to visibility properties and is able to construct and run animations that fade items in or out. So now that you've understood the extreme basics about what a transition looks like and what actually happens with it, 
let's take a look at the types of transitions now this is again from a nice resource on github called material animations by lg well all right so there are three types of transitions now one is transition between activities in other words you have an activity a you have another activity b you start a new activity from a with the new intent start activity method what you want to control is two little things what should happen when a exits what should happen when b enters and that is exactly what is called as an exit transition on a and an enter transition on b if you go further down you will notice that there are two other types of transitions in other words now you're inside activity b and when you press the back button you go to activity a what should happen when b exits because you press the back button that is called a return transition and what happens when a is brought into the picture again thanks to the back stack now that is called a re-enter transition so there are four of them there's exit transition for activity a there is enter transition for b there is a return transition for b and there is a re-enter transition for a now by default if you don't set a return transition and a re-enter transition what's going to basically happen is that the exit and enter transitions are going to play in reverse now again if you didn't understand what i just said i will demonstrate this with an example right in this video so don't fret so based on the four methods that i just discussed there are three types of transitions that you can actually do now first is obviously to transition between activities without sharing anything in other words you have four buttons and one activity you have one button and the other activity and they are not related by any means the second type of transition that you can actually do is a bit more complex it's called a shared element transition now make no mistake the layout files are separate the view objects inside activity a and activity b are separate but you want to give the user an illusion that the two views in a and b are somehow related so that they look continuous when you animate them and that is why they are called shared element animations between activities again we will take a look at an example of this as we proceed further in the series but going down further if you go to the third type of transition that is possible and that simply says animate the view layout elements now this is within the same activity you want to hide maybe a set of buttons you want to change its width or height or whatever properties that you care about that can be done within the same activity simply with the help of a transition usually you would try to ma manipulate the layout params or try to call make measure spec or try to set an animator but you don't have to worry about doing all that because the transition man manager is capable of reading the values that you supplied at the start it's capable of reading the values that you want to supply at the end and then animate between them by whatever means possible so coming back to the blog post by alex lockwood here's a nice explanation by him on what all the four methods do be sure to read that as well so let's take a look at the simplest possible type of transition and that would be within the same activity so let's go to our code here in android studio now the way you can enable transitions in your code is either through xml or through java so let me get back to the documentation and show you that as well so here you can go directly and have transitions defined in the res transition directory which they have specified here now remember now all this applies currently only to lollipop if you want to run transitions on both pre lollipop and lollipop then we'll have to take a look at an unofficial library that is going to do that for us and again there are different types of transitions that are given here like explode change bounce change transform and i will get into them as we go further in the videos but for now remember that what you have is basically different types of transitions and just like an animator set that groups together a set of animations that you can either run in sequential or run in parallel uh, there is something called a transition set that lets you combine several transitions together and of course you can have your custom transitions as well by making your class extend from the transition abstract class out there okay so let's go to code and try to make the simplest type of transition that is possible and that is to fade all these four buttons inside our same activity that is the third type of transition which i just told you about a few minutes ago so going to our code here in the layout file what i have is nothing fancy there's a linear layout for the root 
and I have given it an ID called container A because I'm going to refer this in code. Other than that, nothing fancy at all, just linear layouts and buttons arranged together in a nice format with weights. So going back to our activity underscore A, I've constructed the view group and the four buttons that you see out here and I've found them as well. And notice that I've set an on click listener on the layout and not on the buttons. So if you take a look at this method, which is on click here, here I want to perform a transition. So how can I do that? Let's go ahead and first try a simple fade transition. So basically fade, fade equals to new fade. We can set properties on this transition like fade.setDuration, 5000. We can also set interpolators and other items like animation here. The next thing that we want to do is actually start or trigger the transition. That can be done with the help of the object called Transition Manager. If you go to Google and you type Transition Manager, you'll be taken straight to this class, which is added in API level 19. If you read the documentation, it's going to simply say that this is going to let you fire the transitions when changes are measured and triggered. And if you take a further look, there is also an XML version of the Transition Manager. Notice what tags it supports. There's something called a transition where it takes a from scene tag, it takes a to scene tag, and there's a transition tag here. From scene simply takes a layout ID. For example, say you want to move from activity A, which has layout underscore A, to activity B, which has layout underscore B. So from scene is going to contain the layout of the first activity, to scene is going to contain the layout of the second activity, and Android transition attribute is going to contain how you want to perform the transition whether you want to fade whether you want to explode whether you want to change the bounds so while you're right there in the documentation be sure to read the one for this method begin delayed transition we are going to specify our view group that you want to animate in this case and then the transition that you want to run for this change you don't have to create a scene because the line after you write begin delayed transition whatever changes you perform your transition manager is going to animate to those changes. So let's go back to the code and figure out what I mean by that. Here I'll simply say transition manager dot begin delete transition. There are two things I'm going to need. The first is the view group. In our case, it's called m root. So here I can specify m root here. Second thing is the transition object itself, which is going to be fade in our case, and that's all we need to do. Now, if you run this, there's going to be something weird. Let's take a look at that. So let's take our KitKat device and go to that particular activity containing that layout. Let's say you click on the view group on KitKat and Lollipop. What happens? Nothing happens. And nothing happens because you haven't changed the next line. In other words, like I said, after begin delayed transition is called, that is considered to be your scene. The next statement, you're supposed to modify something or some property so that another scene can be constructed and the transition manager can be animated to. So for example, let's go back to the code here and let's try to actually hide our views. In other words, we can make a method here. So once I have this method toggle visibility, let's take a look at what I simply do here. I take an array of views here and I check if they are currently visible. If yes, then I hide them. So now if you go below this statement and now if you call this method say toggle visibility where we are going to pass our four buttons that would be m button one two three four with this statement you have defined a new scene because you're hiding the four buttons so the transition manager is going to now try and animate from visible to invisible state now let's take a look at that there you go with our lollipop device you go to actively calling here you click on that and bam take a look at how they disappear and that is exactly what a transition manager basically does so at the time of making a transition manager you have one scene after that whatever changes you perform that is considered to be a second scene and the transition manager will try to animate between the two scenes with the help of a custom animator object which it's going to create and this is the simplest way you can work with an activity transition in Android. If you replace that fade with an explode, again, if we click on the layout, take a look at that in slow motion. There's our view group and all the four buttons are flying in different directions. It didn't look good 
and that is because of the linear layout which is the parent of these four buttons which is constructed to take a certain amount of space on the screen if it was taking the full height and full width then the animation would look slightly different so here's one more bit of experimentation that i've done like i told you at the start of this video that you can capture and animate between property values just now i showed you how to animate with visibility let me show you something else here i have removed the animation completely that is the explode or fade and what i have simply done is called the begin delay transition with just the view group now without specifying a transition what it's going to do is try to automatically apply some kind of transition that matches between the initial and final state so here the toggle height or toggle bounce property as it should be rightly called simply takes the current view gets the layout params for that view adjusts the width and height of that particular view and set the layout params at this point if you take a look at lollipop what's going to happen is that the, in the first scene you have some initial value of width and height in the second scene which will be triggered after the toggle height method is called you have a new value of width and height and the transition manager is going to try to animate between these two scenes so let's take a look at that in action so go to lollipop run the app by calling activity calling and take a look at this there you go there is our transition working where the height and the width of your view has been changed so this is what you can simply touch up with transitions in android there's a lot that can be done which i'll be covering up in the further videos in the meantime i would like to know some crazy transition code from you guys as well and be sure to share your code in the comments below and let me know what do you think about transitions in android so far if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a